Hi, it's Ricky Novak. I'm an executive coach here in Melbourne, Australia, and I'm in conversation with Teresa Norton, my esteemed colleague from Hong Kong. During the series of conversations that we're going to be having with you, we're going to share examples of the sorts of challenges that we have individually with our clients, the sorts of things that they've faced, and we're going to ask one another, how would you handle that? Well, Ricky, I've got one for you today. Let's say you have a client who is the COO for a logistics company. And the CEO has asked you to work with him because he is extremely capable and a very positive and outgoing person. However, he is virtually in capable of communicating his ideas in a way that can be followed. His boss thinks this is because the COO's mind works so quickly that he gets from like point A to point D without explaining B and C and it's causing frustration for the CEO. It is confusing for the team and it is of particular frustration for the CFO who has the exact opposite communication style. His deal is that he drills down so deeply into details that he loses uh, the interest of the people he's presenting to before he has even gotten from A to B. So look, they both are recognized as uh, very intelligent and talented people. Um, and, and they individually recognize that in their stage in life, it might be a little tough for them to adjust the ways that they communicate and they're thinking. So, you know, Ricky, how would you handle that? I wouldn't waste any time um, doing anything else except starting off with a, a psychometric profile, a disk profiling tool, for example, not just for the COO, but for all members of the executive team. And that way we lay on the cards exactly who's who, what works and what doesn't, and, and how we can help each other by being authentic and respecting the differences, because we're not all the same. And God forbid if we actually are, it wouldn't make for a dynamic um, workplace. Um, but then I would focus on helping the CAO work on building a mind map or plan before he tries to communicate with the CFO and, and ensure that along that plan he's got the touch points that's going to make communicating the CFO really important. And then I would do it and vice versa as well. So the CFO understands the map of the COO and together try and get a, level, a more level playing field. Um, it, it's unrealistic to expect people to make dramatic changes, but small evidential pieces are really important right now. Just some things that are going to say, oh, yes, I can see that person is trying to make their style more um, explicit for me, to give me a under better understanding of what they actually want and what they're aiming for. Um, what I find is that what people want most uh, right in, when there's a uh, struggle in communication is to see that others are respecting them making an effort, making a difference. Um, and not taking for, uh, uh, for uh, no, not taking it for granted that people are just ticking a box and trying to do things differently. Um, in my work as a Marshall Goldsmith stakeholder engagement coach, I use a framework that I'll share with you, which is how I probably handle it also in this case, is I'd get the COO to ask the CFO, what is one thing? one thing that I can do to improve my effectiveness in this role. I don't want a shopping list. I just want one thing and we'll start with one. Then I'd ask him to listen to the response um, and ask, thank them for their comments, think about it, take time, pause, reflect and assess the benefits back to the business and the relationship when they are more focused and they take on board this particular idea. And then make a visible change to the this style of communication and then continue to work on that and implement. And the whole piece will come together when implementation takes hold. This framework has had tremendous results, especially when people are at odds with communicating because we're not going to lose how we're wired. We just have to be better wired for each other. So I guess uh, I would use that particular framework and that's how I'd handle it. Wow, thanks, Ricky. That was great. Very uh, 
very interesting to hear, you know, what, what stood out to me as sort of some key points. First of all, and maybe I'm working backwards a little bit here, but I just love the idea of looking outside of yourself for answers. Certainly coming, seeking advice from a coach or, or support from a coach is, is one way to look outside yourself. You mentioned mind mapping. You mentioned, you know, um, uh, having a, a, a psychometric uh, profile done. All this outside information can really help you sort out um, a better way of getting your point across to different types of people. Secondly, uh, I like the fact that you said take responsibility for some small changes that you don't have to approach the whole thing all at once, you know, to, to set those incremental goals and, and try and, and take it a step at a time. And then um, finally, you, you mentioned this thing about um, appreciating change and and always being willing to thank somebody for their feedback if you're asking for feedback be willing to thank them for whatever insights they can give you i i think that's great ricky and thank you for sharing and and listen we share uh, folks we share our, our experiences of working with leaders so that ricky and i can learn from each other our approaches as you have noticed if you've been watching this series are very different uh, but we have a, a similar desire for great outcomes for our clients and while we've had great success with the ways that we work with people we encourage you to do what feels authentic and effective for you when you face workplace challenges uh, we want to hear from you we want to hear your comments we want to hear how you would handle some of these situations so please comment below and um, listen you know we we serve by sharing and and we learn by listening we're glad you're with us thank you